Your pastor and I, we go way back. 13 years ago, I met your pastor. And this year, we'll be celebrating 10 years of marriage. Isn't that something? We did our first Bible study together. We did our first crusade together as preachers. When he first met me, I was preaching. He heard my first sermon. He was in the congregation when I preached my first sermon. So we've experienced a lot of firsts together. We had our first child together. I was with you when you had your first church. We've experienced a lot together. So thank you for standing with me and supporting me in ministry as I have supported you over the years. Thank you. Thank you. So, like my husband, I don't preach too long. So, we're going to be short today, amen? So, if you have your Bibles, take them out. We're going to be preaching from Judges 4 today. Uh, I'll be reading from the King James Version. And you at your leisure can read the entire passage. I think it's a lot of lessons for us and the scripture is strong and substantive. So read it at your will. There'll be some verses I'll be pulling out today. But if you have God's word open on your iPads, your iPhones, those who have Androids, my sympathy to you. All right, Judges 4. The Bible tells us, and the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, and reigned in Hazar, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Hirosheth of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron, and 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lepidot, she judged Israel at that time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoham, out of Kedesh Niphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw towards Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali, and of the children of Zebulun. And I will draw unto thee to see you at river Kishon Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, and his chariots, and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thy hand. And Barak said unto her, If thou go with me, I will go, but if thou wilt not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor but for the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kedesh. Today we're preaching from the message entitled, Fight Like a Girl. Fight like a girl. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God fall afresh on us today Jesus pour into me your divine utterances Jesus overshadow my humanity Lord God do a mighty thing in this place today God I pray that you will restore somebody I pray that you will redeem someone do a mighty thing move up and down these aisles today Lord God that your word would be heard with clarity Jesus that you will speak mightily unto someone that we will be blessed Yes, Lord, that we would be elevated, that you would lift us up with your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Fight like a girl. The five-word proverbial phrase often used as an insult to deem one's opponent less than or incompetent. The phrase can still be heard in multiple arenas from both boys and men asserting their skillfulness, testing their strength and dexterity, against one another. It is almost like one's world would come to a screeching halt at the mere mention of those five life-altering words, you fight like a girl. 
But I'd like to suggest to you today that there is so much that we can learn from the stance of a fighting girl. Powerful girls fight with strategy. They study their opponents and gather intelligence on their weak areas. Powerful girls, they go into battle with a plan of attack. Powerful girls fight with a squad. They understand that the greater their village of supporters, the greater their chances for victory. Powerful girls fight understanding the battle is not theirs, it's the Lord. They are armored with the word and covered by his blood. Do you fight like a girl today? So we pick up our story in verse 2 in Judges 4. The Bible tells us that when Ehud was dead, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And so the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan. Jabin's army was led by Sisera, who cruelly oppressed the children of Israel for 20 long years. They destroyed their crops, dishonored their women, and slayed their children. Israel cried out for help. You see, Israel did not have a king during this period. Instead, judges rose up to rule over God's people and to deliver judgment on behalf of God. But no sooner than one judge died, the wicked people began their wickedness across the world. God sent judgment for their sins, and quickly they cried out for deliverance. Somebody said that sin will take you further than you want to go, cost you more than you want to pay, and keep you longer than you want to stay. There will never be victory in our lives unless we are serious about having a relationship with God. Sin causes separation between God and his creation. It stagnates our spiritual growth and authorizes our spiritual death. But I'm so glad that God does not wish that we perish, but that we have eternal life. I'm glad that God doesn't leave us in our mess. He sends a savior to rescue, restore, and redeem us. Thank God for Jesus. And so enters Deborah on the scene. She's the fifth judge of Israel at a dark time in Israel's history. She illustrated God's power to deliver. One of the outstanding characteristics she demonstrated was her willingness to step outside the bounds of the traditional role of a woman to, de this, to deliver her country from bondage. She was a fighter. Deborah's gender did not hinder her from going on God's mission, from effecting change in her community, from serving. Her gender did not hinder God from using her. Some of us think that women are only good to act as flower pots on our porches, servants in our kitchens, custodians to clean up our messes, maids to pick up after our children, chefs to prepare our meals, and companions on those lonely nights. But women, God says your worth is much more than that. He defines you as his creation. Your father, the creator, says you are worthy. Your merchandise is good. Proverbs 31, 18, don't just give it up to anybody. Your merchandise is good. It should be respected, honored, and preserved. You were bought with a price, 1 Corinthians 6.20. It means that you are valuable to God. Your life means something to him. You have purpose. You were fearfully and wonderfully made by God, Psalms 139. God took time to shape you and form you. Work went into creating you, my sisters, from your curves to your curls, from your eyes to those thighs. He created you as his masterpiece and so Deborah is one of God's masterpieces and so are you when people looked at her they saw a leader standing firm in God's word they saw a fighter who advocated for her people they saw a friend who listened to their problems they saw a mother who loved her children they saw how she prevailed a miss loss hurt, guilt, and betrayal. She was a fighter. They saw a fighter in her. What do people see when they look at you? And Deborah used her position of power to create social change in her country. What are you using your power to do? 
Some of us are good at showing up at church and dressing nicely and lifting holy hands and planning great programs. But what is the greater impact that God has called you to do in this world? Our, when our men are being stopped and frisked, are we rallying against police brutality? What are we doing against gun violence? Are we using our areas of expertise to empower and uplift each other? Is your job a space where you can grow spiritually and create a positive impact? God delights in reaching out to use women to create social change. You don't believe me? Let me call Miriam on the scene. It was her careful watch over Moses that created a generation of leaders. It was her support and prayers that raised up one of the greatest leaders Israel has ever seen. Don't believe me? Let me call Esther on the scene. It was her courage and her willingness to stand for principle that saved her people from destruction. Don't believe me? Let me call Mary, mother of Jesus on the scene. It was her purity and total surrender to God that created the Messiah. Without the Savior, there would be no remission of sin. Without the Savior, there'd be no hope of eternal life. Without the Savior, there'd be no you or me. Thank God for women who stood for principle. And so God delights in using women to make a change in the world. The Bible tells us that Deborah became a leader in an unprecedented time in Israel's history. She created social change. She made a difference. But it was her relationship with God that influenced her elevation. You see, the problem with many of us is God is our side chick, quick fix, one-stop shop. We meet him once a week and get our fix. But we do not nurture a relationship with him. As mothers, we have a divine duty and calling to nurture the spirituality of our children and our family, but sometimes we neglect our own spiritual wellness. We get caught in the intersectionalities of invisibility, and no matter how much money we make or how successful we are, there are moments of invisibility, the same invisibility that my girl Aisha Curry talked about this week. Her transparency that she shared with the world of feeling invisible as a woman. Some of us mothers, women, my sisters, God says, I see you. He says, I love you. He says, I hear you. He says, you are not invisible to me because I am concerned about your heart. I am concerned about the scope of your intentions. I am concerned about the nature of my relationship with you. And so he is looking for people who have willing hearts to obey him. Deborah uses her leadership skills. She trusted in God and committed her life to his service. And so it was her relationship with God that influenced her elevation. And then the Bible tells us now that the children of Israel came to her for judgment. And then she sends for Barak, one of the leaders of Israel's army. And this is what he says. It's so funny. He says, if you go with me, then I will go into battle. He affirms Deborah's call to engage in combat. She says, the glory will not be yours, it will be the Lord's, and he will be delivered in the hand of a woman. You see, it was unusual for women to go into battle with men, yet Deborah agreed without hesitation. How do you react when you are called to experience a challenge? Deborah believed that no matter how impossible the situation looked, no matter how much her people were in trouble, that she was ready to be used by God. But when we now look at the analytics, Sisera had more weapons, they had more soldiers, they had a greater advantage for victory. But how many of you know that if God be for you, who can be against you? How many of us know that no matter how impossible the situation appears, no matter how high or low the hurdle is, no matter how much funds you need, no matter how long the eviction notice is posted, no matter how impossible the situation appears, God specializes in solving difficult problems. 
and God came through for his people just as how God promises to come through for you. Somebody said he was the way maker, the problem solver. He's undefeated. He's never changing. His wo he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. What a mighty God we serve. And so Deborah did not stop to question God's command. Her faith in God's promises was greater. She had a willingness to serve God. How many of you know that God will rise up in the occasion when we need him most? Oswald Chambers says that when Christians are confronted by a crisis, our true character of faith will emerge unvarnished and unannounced. We are living in a time as not before. When persecution comes, will you be able to stand? I'll be honest, it's not always easy to stand for Christ. It's not always easy to look at our situation and think that we will make it out of it. But today God challenges us to rather than look at the size of the situation, look at the size of the God we serve. And so I'm so thankful that God never sees our situation quite the same way we do. He's able to see the beginning from the end because eyes have not seen, nor has ears heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that my God has prepared for you and me. And so she made a decision to stand for God. Our decisions to stand from God's promises should never be wavering. God's songwriter says, my faith looks up to the old lamb of Calvary. The songwriter says, trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. At the cross, at the cross, when I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away, I received my sight and now I am happy all the day thank God he's able today and so we revisit our text now uh, the Bible tells us that Barak trusted Deborah's leadership and went into battle Deborah was not only a spiritual person but she had a support system she had a squad some of us hang around folk who don't take our best interests in mind be careful of your alliances Women, it is so important that we find a spouse who will support our decisions, who will help us to uplift the standards of God in our lives. Some of us hook up with these guys who lead us to abandon principles, forsake logic, and break vows. I even remember a couple of years ago when we moved from Michigan to New York and I was job hunting and I had all of these opportunities and went on all these interviews and got a couple of callbacks and I was super excited and I went to my husband and I said, honey, these two people call me and they want to offer me the job. What do you think? And my husband looks at me and he goes, what did God say? And I'm like, I'm like, okay, okay, yes, what did God say? But like, what did you say? Like, like what do you say about it? And he goes, what did God say about it? And I remember being so excited about it, but in that moment, I felt like it was a rebuke that even in the little things and the big things, I did not consult God first. And so I wanna affirm my husband right now for trusting and believing in God and taking all of our decisions to him first. I thank God for a spiritual and spirit-led husband. Women, it's important that you choose a partner who is connected to God. Yes, he looks good, but what is his prayer life like? Yes, he has connections, but is he connected to Christ Jesus? Be careful who you spend time with. Hang around people who will improve your spiritual life and not take from it. Deborah had a ride or die crew. They were with her in strategic planning and following through with God's divine order. They needed someone to fight like a girl. Hashtag squad goals. And so the Bible tells us that Sisera gathered all of his chariots, even 900 of them, and the people were with him. And Deborah said to Barak, this is the day in which the Lord will deliver him into your hand. Can you imagine Sisera? Can you imagine when he saw Deborah leading in this battle? 
He underestimated Israel's army because it was led by a woman, but she was a woman with the power of God on her life. Sometimes people underestimate the anointing that God places on women, the anointing that God places on mothers. My mothers, my women, my sisters, walk boldly in your womanhood. Walk boldly into situations because God has anointed you. He has touched you and he has called you for such a time as this. And so the Bible says that the Lord discomfited Sisera and all of his chariots. You see, the word discomfited in the original language means confused or to cause disarray. I'm so glad that when the enemy tries to mess with me, my God discomforts him. My God interrupts his plans of destruction. That accident that could have killed me, God stepped in and confused the enemy's plan. That disease that should have taken me out, God stepped in and confused the enemy's plan. That relationship that could have destroyed me, God stepped in and confused the enemy's plan. That addiction that could have destroyed me, God God stepped in and confused the enemy's plan. When God steps in, the enemy will run for his life. And so the Bible tells us that Sisera flees on foot. And now he encounters Jael. She fed him, gave him refuge, and then he fell asleep. And when he was sleeping, she took a nail and a hammer and hammered it into his head killing him my lord my lord can i just pause here for a commercial break right here men be careful who you seek refuge from you think you may be running from your wife into the arms of another woman to solve your problems but little do you know that you're escaping to your execution be careful who you hook up with not all bodies are safe bodies some of you, your alliances may endanger your life. Men choose women who are faithful to God, wise in their decisions and faithful in their actions. Her price should be far worth more than rubies. And so Jael joined in battle to support Deborah. The battle would not have been completed until Jael fulfilled her role. Oftentimes, as women, we don't support and empower each other. It seems easier for us to put each other down than for us to encourage and support. Nico Everett, founder of Girls for Change, says, one of the biggest problems in women becoming successful is their ability to learn from and support each other. She continues to say, invest time with other women who help you to feel good about yourself. Women who call you out on your actions in love. Turn up the volume on positive thinking. Delete negative people and thoughts from your life. Realize that you can't change others. You can only control your own choices. As women, we have to learn to join forces with other women to make a change in this world. Nico is right. As women of faith, we have a responsibility to inspire, mentor, and support the next generation of world changers. Fight like a girl to me. It means you come armed with a squad of women who identify with your struggle. Fighting like a girl to me means that you are committed to supporting each other, come what may. You're supported each other by praying and so you can win the victory together. Fighting like a girl means that you will face opposition. The enemy will discredit you and he will try to take your gifts from you. But God places a strong power in you. Stand firm and trust God and he will see you through. Fighting like a girl means that current mothers, future mothers, aunts, friends, sisters, you are committing your life to raising world changers and spiritual leaders who will usher in the soon coming of Jesus Christ. Fighting like a girl means that we raise boys who will honor their bodies and respect their women and live honorable lives. Fighting like a girl means that the men in our lives will respect us, they will support us, they will lift us up, they will pray for us, they will wash the dishes when we need to. 
They will drop off the kids and pick them up. They will help with homework on days when we're PMSing and we need a break. Men who pray for us and who lead in God's way. Deborah's fight model was simple. Listen to God, do as he instructs, and trust him for the victory. And so, if you're here today and God says, come, I'm asking you to take a stance like Deborah. Her journey was not one that was easy, but it was filled with God blessing her all the way. She had a squad and a group of people who supported her. She had a village to lift her up. And as the musician begins to play, Deborah's life story can be identifiable by many of us. She fought like a girl. She stood for principle. She dedicated her life to God. And she was responsible for saving her people from bondage. God says today, women, even though our struggle is one unlike the man, God says, I've got you covered, woman. Even from your inception, I created you with a plan and a purpose. Your job in this world is not only for you. It's for you to pour into others. It's for you to inspire and mentor and support other women. So if your desire today is to stand for God, if your desire today is saying, God, use me how you see fit. Use me on my job. Use me among my friends. Use me in my church environment. Use me to do amazing and mighty things for you. If that is your desire today, stand with me, my women. And men, if it is your desire today to stand and hold up the women in your lives, I want you to do so. It is a special gift to be a mother. It is a special calling that requires you to develop a great deal of patience and so much love in your heart. But we may not all be called to be mothers, but for sure we all called to be women. And so today, I want you to dedicate your life to serving God, women and to nurturing a relationship with him because fighting like a girl means that you're standing for God's principles. Fighting like a girl means that when the troubles of life hit you, you're on your knees praying. Fighting like a girl means that you're strategizing on how you can get to the next point. It means that you're planning your finances well. Fighting like a girl means that you're using your influence to impact this world. Fighting like a girl means you're living an honorable life. Fighting like a girl means that you're touching lives and meeting people where they need you. Fighting like a girl means that you are a resource for people in your life. Fighting like a girl means that you are a leader. And I just want to be 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today, God. We thank you for the women in the room. We thank you for the mothers in the room, Lord God. We pray that today you will do a mighty thing in their lives, Lord God. We pray that you will honor them for their strength, Lord, and their resilience, Jesus. We pray that your Holy Spirit will come down upon them in mighty, marvelous ways today, God. We pray that you will renew a right spirit within them, Jesus. That you will lift them up in all areas of their lives, Lord God. That you will give them power that has never been seen before, Jesus. That you will cause them to be elevated on their jobs, Lord God. Lift them up and take them to higher places, Jesus. I pray that you will do something mighty in the lives of their children, God, that you will provide for them, Jesus, that their cupboards will never be empty, that their pockets will always be filled, Jesus, that they will always have resources, God. I pray, Jesus, that you will heal them of infirmity, God. Put a hedge of protection around about them, Jesus. Wherever they go, Lord God, may they be a blessing to somebody, Jesus. I pray may they never be hurt, Jesus. May they always continue to grow in you, Lord. And at the end of it all, when it's all said and done, we shall all be there in the kingdom with you. And even when the difficult times come, Jesus, may they remember, Lord God, that you have given them power that is beyond measure. May they remember from whence they came. May they remember that they were strategic place God may they remember that you have a calling on their lives may they remember Jesus that their responsibility is to fight like a girl in Jesus name we pray amen